Some analysis of President Obama's argument now. Ali Hassan Abu Nima is a Palestinian-American journalist and co-founder of the Electronic Intifada, an independent website about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He joins us from South Bend, Indiana. According to President Obama, then, those against these talks are, quote, cynics. You're a cynic. He actually said cynics, and uh, I think he also said rejectionists or, or something like that. Well, I think anyone watching this speech would have to be a cynic when you consider that uh, just yesterday the UN Human Rights uh, Council uh, found that there was sufficient evidence to uh, have prosecutions of Israelis for the killings of nine human rights activists on the Gaza Freedom Flotilla. And here was the President of the United States at the United Nations telling people to quote unquote not to tear down Israel. Uh, he said, uh, for example, he said that uh, Palestinians killing Israelis is, is not resistance. But I never heard him say that uh, Israel's mass killings of Palestinian civilians is not self-defense. So we don't see anything new here, unfortunately. And that, I think, bodes uh, very ill for the peace process that he's so invested in. Right. But what is new, according to President Obama in his speech, and it's, a, it's an argument we hear quite often, is everyone is aware that this is the last chance for a two-state solution. We actually talked to a professor in Tel Aviv who said he talked to members of the cabinet who, who said Mr. Netanyahu had changed. He re realizes his moment in history. That's all nonsense then? Well, let's judge him by uh, not just what he says, but uh, what he does. Israel doesn't seem to show any interest in the two-state solution. If they were interested in it, they would uh, not be uh, continuously building settlements in the occupied West Bank. They wouldn't be demolishing homes as they did yesterday uh, in Atur in Jerusalem. They wouldn't be putting settlers into Silwan like the settler who yesterday killed Samir Sirhan, a father of five in occupied East Jerusalem. None of these actions are consistent with either a desire for peace or a two-state solution. It's an interesting um, sort of exercise in phrasing that we've heard both from President Obama and members of the quartet in recent days. It, it goes like this. We believe the moratorium should be extended. We also believe the talks should press on. Uh, and uh, does that put more pressure on the Israelis or the Palestinians, do you think? What kind of talk is that really from the president of a superpower? He, he was at the United Nations and he didn't have the guts to say that Israel's settlement construction is a gross violation of numerous UN Security Council resolutions and a violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention. And it's not a favor to anybody for Israel to extend the so-called moratorium. It is a binding obligation under international law, not only for Israel to stop building the settlements, but to tear down the settlements it's built in violation of international law and to tear down the apartheid wall in the West Bank, which was ruled illegal in 2004 by the International Court of Justice. The president there was to, uh, said in the case of Iran that international law works, but for some strange reason, the president of the United States doesn't have the guts to mention international law when it comes to Israel. Why is that? Ali Abu Nima, thank you very much. Thank you.